This is the story of a humble but a great man who dedicated his life to the service of humanity. He was one man, but he was the world to me. He was fountain of love not only to me, but to the whole of humanity who came in contact with him. He was embodiment of servitude and righteousness. And yes, much more. When he came into my life, I was only four years old. My name is Pyara Singh, a name which he gave to me. I remained alive solely because of the love and dedication of him. His life is the story of thousands of people like me who have been touched by his love. He picked us up from the heap of societies discarded and unwanted. We are the sick, the poor, the disabled. In us, he only saw the face of the true God. But to me, he himself was a God. He was a spiritual giant. This is the house he built, an everlasting testimony to his compassion. It is called Pingalwada. The founder of the house was Bhagat Puran Singh Ji. In this house were those discarded by society, the masses whom Bhagat Ji loved more than anyone could love, even more than one's own family members. Pingalwada translated literally means the house of cripples. I would like to explain how this idea of building the noble place came to Bhagatji. It was when he saw that the discarded souls needed a permanent place to live. Before this, he tended to the sick and crippled on the roadside. He used public and railway station washrooms to wash the wounds and dirty clothes of the sick. Pagat Puran Singh was born in Rajewal, a village in Punjab in 1904. His mother Mehtab Kaur was a child widow from a poor family. She named her son Ramji Das. She had been married to Chibumal, who was a widower and well off. He had two children from his previous marriage. However, before they married, Mehtab Kaur had to agree that she wouldn't bear any children. And so she had to abort three pregnancies. On her fourth pregnancy, she pleaded with her husband to let her keep this child. She promised that the child would make no claim to the wealthy husband's estate. Thus was born Ramji Das. Ramji Das's mother influenced his young mind with spiritual and moral values. She would narrate to him the pious and legendary stories. One story she told was about Lord Shiva, who before going off to sleep 
always ensured that no one on earth remained hungry. She would also narrate the stories of Dhrupagat, Raja Bhartri, Hanuman and Pag Prahlad. These stories instilled in his mind the importance of being a good human being. She encouraged him to provide water to animals, plants and to trees, to offer feed to birds and to protect the beasts of burden by picking up thorns and stones from along the trails. She instilled in him a sense of performing noble deeds. His mother planted a triveni, three trees, neem, bohar and people. Ramji Das learned well and gradually became a beacon of compassion for all God's creation. From an early age, he paid regular visits to holy shrines, regardless of their religious affiliation. Ramji Das had his early education in his village of Rajewal. Due to the drought of 1913, his father's business was ruined and so he declined to pay for his son's education. His mother was determined to ensure her son's uninterrupted schooling, so she began working as a housemaid. But she could not make enough to make ends meet. However, in 1916, she sent her son to Khanna for continuation of his further education. Three years later, she accepted an offer 300 kilometers away to work for a doctor's family. And so, the once inseparable mother and son lived apart for five years. Even though he was a good student, he had difficulty concentrating on his studies due to loneliness and separation from his mother. Attracted by the teachings which reflected his beliefs, he converted to Sikhism in 1923. Eventually, mother and son were reunited in Lahore. Upon her urging, Ramji Das attended Khalsa High School. It was there at the precise place of the martyrdom of the fifth Sikh Guru, Arjun Dev, that he became a devotee of the Gurudwara Dera Sahib. Thus began his life of service to others. Apart from his other pursuits, he cared for the elderly, infirm and sick who came to the Gurdwara for help. So outstanding was his dedication and commitment to the selfless service of others that Pai Teja Singh, head priest of Dera Sahib, bestowed upon him the new honorific name of Pai Puran Singh, a perfect Sikh. Years later, when she was dying, his mother disclosed to him her guilt about the three abortions she had been compelled to undergo. The magnanimous Pagatji told her that she was blameless. Pagatji had seen the tragic misery of his mother and of women in general. He promised his mother that he would live the life of an ascetic, unattached to all material things. To better dedicate himself to caring for the destitute and crippled people, 
he promised to remain celibate all his life. His mother died on June 23, 1930. I am Pyara Singh and I would like to tell you how I met this great man. In November 1934, I was abandoned by my family at the main gate of Dera Saib Gurdwara in Lahore. I was four years old. I was mute, mentally impaired, and physically deformed. After the death of my mother, no one in my family could take care of me. So my uncles brought me to Gurdwara and abandoned me at the gate at mid of night. The head priest discovered me there and asked Puran Singh if he would look after me. Puran Singh did not hesitate for a moment and took me under his care. He named me Pyara the loved one and from that very day we were inseparable he carried me on his shoulders for the next 14 years this became symbolic of the manner in which he carried all the elderly the infirm the disabled the crippled and the sick on his shoulders for getting them treated he did not consider me a burden nor an obligation. I was the symbol of his love. It was not an easy task since I was helpless. My hands and feet were lifeless and I was always on his shoulders. Affectionately, Pagatji used to describe me as the garland around his neck. Whether he knew it or not, I understood his every word. Pagatji lived a high moral life. Apart from me, there were other people being looked after at the Dera Sahib Gurdwara by Pagatji. One day, he brought two brothers from an orphanage, four-year-old Avtar Singh and the other six-year-old. They became my friends. My parents died and I didn't even know them. There was a person named Akali Kaul Singh. He arranged for someone to leave us at Lahore Orphanage. Pagatji used to visit the orphanage. On one of his visits, he found us sick. He took both of us brothers with him to Dera Sab Gurdwara. He kept us there. After the treatment, I became healthy. He put me in school and I passed my fourth grade there. After the partition of India, we came to Anandpur. In 1953, we read in the newspaper that Pagti was in Amritsar. I contacted him and he asked me to come to Amritsar as soon as possible. The independence of India in August 1947 brought much tragedy to the people of Punjab. Due to its partition, Pagatji along with us had to leave Lahore and move to the Khalsa College refugee camp in Amritsar. He had no money and he had me on his shoulders. That place felt very unstable. It was a sea of tents with 25,000 refugees crowded onto the college lawn. There were sick, wounded, wailing women, orphaned children, handicapped and crippled people. It was a sea of sadness and destitution. So Pagatji did what he always did. 
right there in the middle of that sight of squalor, he gathered seven crippled and handicapped people and personally started to look after them. When the camp closed, Pagat Puran Singh and his company of dependents moved to a large people tree near the railway station. For shelter, he used the archway under the staircase. He went from house to house, begging for his dependents. We came here in 1947. It was a new phenomenon. He used to take the disabled people to the hospitals, get them treated and make them healthy. Pagdi did a great job for the society, which is unbelievable. Although the government acknowledged his achievements, but the people respected him more. Whenever a news about a discarded patient reached him, sometimes from the railway station or bus stand, he would carry the patient on his back to Pingalwara. The railway station proved to be a very practical site for him. His work was noticed by many affluent and influential people of Amritsar passing through there. It increased the base of support for his mission. And still, more refugees, orphans and destitute were arriving. He could not stay at the railway station for longer time. He moved his camp to underneath the Bodh tree opposite Guru Tegh Bahadur Hospital. By the end of 1948, he had to move his camp again. He found an abandoned house opposite to the office of the civil surgeon. His zeal to help the helpless was tested here. He came across a woman by the name of Asha Rani who was suffering from advanced TB. She also had a four-year-old son named Jita. He tried to admit her to the hospital without success. To prevent others from getting infected, he separated her, placing her under an ornate structure at Maharaja Ranjit Singh Gate. In spite of his devoted attention, Asha Rani died after a couple of weeks. Jita became a ward of Pagatji. Pagatji had to move his camp numerous times. In 1950, he moved to an abandoned cinema hall. A year later, he moved to an abandoned mosque to be used for critical patients. Cinema hall became his headquarters for the next seven years. In 1957, Mehar Chand Khanna, Union Minister for Rehabilitation, sanctioned a piece of land for Pingalwada, which was recommended by Gopi Chand Bhargav, the then Chief Minister of Punjab, who was impressed by Puran Singh's work. Pingalwada certainly is a great accomplishment of this remarkable man. Original in its concept, the institution represents a natural outcome of an irresistible urge of Pagatji to do his best for the helpless who could not gain admission into hospitals. Such an idea could only find its genesis in the mind of a saint. He wasn't a man of abundance, but he was very rich at heart. In an established city like Amritsar, where fully equipped hospitals existed to serve the well-to-do, the common man needed a convalescence facility with full board for longer stays. Unlike the conventional locations, Pingalwara was and is a healthcare and rehabilitation center that serves everyone. This, according to Pagatji, 
was the very reason for the existence of Pingalwada. The model of Pingalwada may be worth considering by philanthropists interested in founding hospitals for public good. His was a pioneering approach for the care of sick and invalids. Pagatji believed that it is really up to the society at large to shoulder the responsibility for health care. And so Puran Singh's relentless effort had led him to create an ideal institution that surpasses any hospital founded on the generosity of rich persons. Pingalwada is a hospice, a family home for those who are discarded by the society, a hospital for the soul. Among human beings, there are some who are blessed with healthy bodies, intelligent minds, harmonious conditions of life and contented childhoods. But they should not think that they deserved what they got. Instead, they must do something for others who are not as fortunate and are deprived of these gifts. Pagatji never thought about putting people under any obligation. We owe this debt to God who has blessed us with everything. Through our efforts, we have to repay this debt to the society. Gradually, people began to join the cause. A quiet army of volunteers came forward to collect money on the trains, buses and streets. His cause attracted many more including people of Indian origin settled abroad, especially the Gurdwaras and other organizations. Bhagatji's vision of service to humanity is embodied in the institution of Pingalwada. Starting from roadside, squatting to expanding facilities at cities such as Amritsar, Sangrur, Chandigarh, Goindbal, Saib, and Jalandar is a remarkable achievement. At all the centers, the mission and dedication remains equally fervent. For the care of orphans, handicapped, sick, and dying. It was not only the human beings getting shelter at Pingalwada. Pagatji would bring stray or other injured animals and treat and feed them. He would give a respectful burial to a dead animal found on the road. Pagatji believed that dignity in death is a birthright of each living being. The All India Pingalwada Society was registered on March 6th, 1957. Pagatji installed black wooden collection boxes all over the city. He himself would walk along the Hall Bazaar, the main street ringing his bell to collect money. Through his tireless effort and due to wide public support, the first house of Pingalwada was built. Pingalwara is carrying out the legacy of Pagatji. It is looking after the helpless young, old and handicapped. Pingalwara is also working for the environment. We have made a nursery for plants. We give away plants to people. Pingalwara has also established an artificial limb center. It has served 980 patients who had amputated legs or arms. We had a patient with both arms amputated. He had both his arms fixed and he went away driving a motorcycle. We have a physiotherapy center which even serves the patients getting treatment from other hospitals. It is said that even well-off families leave their elders and handicapped children in the Pingalwada. This old person has two sons and three daughters.
When she came to us, she was unable to tell her name or address. She came in a terrible condition in 1998. She was totally unaware of herself and her surroundings. She is married with one child and her name is Annapurna. Why and how she reached here, she does not remember. She has improved a lot. She has started to work in Pingalwada. She had a feeling to go back to her home and see her family. As she is HIV positive, we did not want her to go to her husband and child so that the disease does not spread any further. We counseled her. She expressed a desire to see her son. She understood that how this disease is contagious and she promised not to keep any relationship. I saw my family, husband and child. My husband had married another woman. He agreed to keep both of us together. We stayed together for two months. My husband's second wife and I used to fight. So I thought, why to make their life hell? So I came back to Pingalwara. We went on a pilgrimage trip to Baba Balaknath and Chintpurni. At Pir Niga, we found a lost child around two and a half years old who was unable to speak. The only thing she would utter is that she wants to go to her aunt. In such cases, Pingalwala tries to find their relatives through media or police. If not traceable, these people stay in Pingalwara. Pingalwara management, with the help of doctors, social workers, assesses the patients, treats them, or gets them treated in the hospital. Younger ones are given education, and elder ones are given training and tools to be integrated back into society. Among many success stories from Pingalwara is Sarvan Singh. Sarvan Singh, who was an orphan aged six, who arrived by train in Amritsar. Hunger forced him to beg on a platform. Seeing his plight, a tea vendor gave him food and Sarvan Singh started working for him. The one day, someone informed the tea vendor that legally he could not keep the child with him, that the police should be informed or the child should be handed over to Pingalwara, a home for the homeless. Pingalwara Ashram guided me to study. I study up to grade 10 plus 2. I asked them to get me technical training. They found that I was intelligent and I had no vices and Pagatji had a dream to open an artificial limb center. They sent me to Jaipur to get trained in making of artificial limbs. Now I have a job in Pingalwara. Here we make artificial limbs ourselves. In the beginning we did not have many patients, but now we have nearly 30 to 40 patients visit us every month. Pagatji was fond of children. He used to visit the Golden Temple every day. On his return in the evening, he would always bring some treat for the children. All the children would wait for his return as he would never come empty-handed. He would bring sweets, dates or peanuts and seasonal sweets. I wonder, if Pinkalwara wasn't here, what would have happened to people like us? Full of energy and up-to-date with his ideas, culled from books and newspapers, he had socially relevant advice for everyone. He used to go regularly to the Al Singh Library in Lahore. Pagatji was not only keen in reading newspapers, but he was also interested in knowing the background of the developments he would read. He read and studied the news in depth, which earned him the nickname of 
the educated beggar. He was a voracious reader and a multi-dimensional personality. He was keen in spreading the message of the great people to masses. He had a fixation with the biographies and lives of great people such as Tagore and Emerson. He started publishing books and pamphlets which he distributed free of charge on recycled paper. Pagatiji distributed lots of literature to the public free of cost. This was not a small sacrifice that Pagatiji did. No other organization had ever done it. He would motivate people to read his literature. His writing used to be heartfelt and knowledgeable. He would include foreign authors into his writings. He himself was very knowledgeable and he had a good command of English. He knew the literary figures of the world by reading their literature. The main purpose of the printing press was to make people aware of the problems of the times and their solutions. Pagaji felt that poor people could not read and write because they didn't have the money. Therefore, Pagaji wanted to educate such people. Pagatiji used to say that Pingalwara is his university. He wanted to impart education in an unconventional way and he did so. Here books are being printed in 10, 20, 25,000 numbers. Thick books of 300 or 500 pages and small books of 40 to 50 pages are also printed and all are distributed free of charge. Pagatji had this vision that the Almighty had created this world, be it be vegetation or the animal kingdom, where all are interdependent. All have been created to carry out positive jobs. To love everything and to safeguard them is a human duty. While Pagaji took care of the patients, he was also concerned about the environment. The groundwater table is falling, glaciers are shrinking, water levels of the sea is rising. There is an enormous number of vehicles and so many power plants have come into existence. So many buildings have been built. For healthy breathing, the earth should have 33% of jungle cover but it has been reduced to 5.6%. On the principle of wind the master, water the father, earth the mother, if we evaluate our water, air and food is already polluted. Pagatji had also prophesied that after 2025, due to pollution, the population of India would start decreasing because a lot of people would die with TB cancer or asthma and many of those born will be handicapped. What Pagatji predicted 45-50 years ago is being realized now. We are spreading Pagatji's message to the masses. We produce 100,000 saplings. From that we ourselves plant 20,000 saplings from July to September. Recently, we have started organic farming where we don't use any fertilizers or insecticides. We show this farm as a demonstration to public. Pingalwara also have a dairy farm. The milk produced here is used for the patients. Following the principles of the Sikhism, Pagatji started serving those called invalid and suffering people to whom their own families were not prepared to accept. It becomes our duty to serve others and help the great work of the institution of Pingalwada. The journey was arduous and painful. 
but single-handedly toiling day and night in scorching heat and biting cold in rains and thunderstorms undeterred by adversaries undaunted by criticism he continued to pick up these wretched dying dirty infectious creatures of god from wherever they could be found to bring them to pingalwada it was thankless painful and difficult work mother teresa had the support of the powerful roman catholic church of the western media and foundations like rock like rockefeller and ford plus the enormous sums of money she got from the nobel prize bhagat puran singh had absolutely nothing In the summer of 1992 Bhagat Puran Singh fell ill despite being attended to by the foremost specialists he never recovered he left this world forever on August 5th 1992 thus passed away a legendary figure who fought for the survival of the suffering masses for more than 7 decades upon him were conferred such national awards as padm shri lok ratan and punjab state pai kanaiya award in his lifetime he never concerned himself with awards he even returned the padm shri award after the indian army's assault on the golden temple in june 1984 It is disappointing that the Indian people never fully honored this hero among them and his service to humanity. Upon his death no national paper carried his obituary. In fact he was and remains India's unsung modern day hero. More than 500 million people in the world are disabled as a consequence of mental or physical impairments. Their lives are hampered by physical and social barriers. Bhagat ji had a feeling about such barriers. That is why Bhagat ji created something different. He knew that what was needed is treatment of the whole person not just the symptoms of the disease khushwan singh was the only nationally known journalist to pen an obituary recognizing the magnitude of this man his mission and achievements in his column with malice towards one and all And as for his legacy it is embodied in Pingalwada a temple of god without any idol or a representative religious symbol of god installed in it the only symbol of god in the pingalwada is the love for god's creation humans animals plants and trees the aim and chief function of the pingalwada is the care of the physically helpless people whether in the grip of infirmity or old age or afflicted with sickness but in view of its educational activity the institution is also a social laboratory where the solution of many a social problem is not only discovered but from where it is also broadcast with an effective and original method of publicity as such this kind of temple represents a great effort of intelligent humanitarianism and is destined to play its own role in the cultural history of the country 
The picking up of pebbles from the streets is very symbolic. After all, for close to seven decades, Bhagat Ji had been picking up human pebbles cast away on the streets by a cruel destiny or an uncaring society. There is a saying, God helps those who help themselves. But then there are those who cannot help themselves. And these are the people that Bhagat Puran Singh has vowed to help. Bhagat Ji's mission is best described in these lines, Surat Mahala Panjma. Humility is my mace, touching the dust on the feet of the people, my spear, the weapons no evil doer can withstand. The master, all endowed, has armed me with these. Bhagat Ji, you have done wonderful things for people like me. But will our governments, religious institutions and public at large take inspiration from your life to serve the most needful section of humanity? Bhagat Ji, you will remain forever in our hearts. In my heart, I love you so very much. <laughs> 